Greetings, Faith Christian Center women. I am so sorry that I have to miss the Mother's Day Girl Talk. I wish I could be there with you, but I am in my last month of pregnancy, so I am not traveling anymore. I am so thrilled, though, that Pastor Sue and Jessica are going to be doing this Girl Talk, Things That Smart Women Do. It is an amazing message, and it will be a big blessing into your life, no matter what age you are. I wanted to do the introduction tonight just so I could touch on a couple things that are important to me. Things that smart women do. And I feel as though there are so many things that as women, young women, young wives, young mothers, that we do every day, and we don't realize that we are doing them because we are smart women. The most important thing we can do in our lives is to, every day, wake up and renew our minds to God's Word. Even if we're woken up too early or we were awake several times during the night, the most important thing we can do is to start our day with prayer. Even as we're making breakfast or getting kids dressed or helping our husbands get everything they need together to go to work, we can do things that would set the tone for the day. And the best thing that we can do is to pray over our families, to pray over their safety, to pray over the things they will encounter during their day. The best thing that we can do is to pray for our families. I also want to touch on tonight um, that Proverbs 14 1 says, The wise woman builds her house, but with her own hands the foolish one tears hers down. And right away, whether we start off our mornings and we're tired and we're we're drained, we have to start our day off renewing our minds. We start in prayer. Um, and our relationship with God is our number one priority. Number two, I'd, I'd say that for me, it's going to be our relationships with our spouse is next. Uh, you may say, well, I have my best friends or I have relationships with my family, but they all come after our relationship with our husbands. Our husbands are our number one priority. They are our partners, our lovers, and they are our best friends. The Bible says, do not let the sun go down on your anger. So if you have a disagreement, if you have a dispute, if you're working through something in your marriage, that's not for everybody to know. That is for you and your husband to work through, to ask for forgiveness before the sun goes down, to not go to bed angry, to not carry it with you into future days, weeks, and months, but to ask for forgiveness and to work this out without other people knowing and coming into your marriage. The next important thing that smart women do is to train their children. Of course, Proverbs is full of scriptures, wisdom scriptures about how we are to raise and train our children. And there are times um, <laughs> with young children, of course, that they just seem to operate within a realm of chaos. Their world is sometimes up and sometimes down, but it's our job to remain calm, to not join in their chaos, but to bring them calmness, that they calm down, that we can speak life into them, we can direct them, we can train them, we can teach them. And every day we should be speaking to our husbands, our children, and ourselves, life. God's life, His Word into our hearts and speak those words over our house, over our families, and over ourselves. Know your value. And that's really my last point for the introduction is to know your value, young women of God, to know your worth. No one is going to value you if you do not value yourself. Sometimes I think back to my young years and I remember how certain decisions were made. I dated guys that I shouldn't have even had a second or third date with. But sometimes you make foolish decisions when you're young and then you learn from them. The most important lesson that I think my dad gave me before I left was he, they raised me to serve in church, to serve 
in the house of the Lord. And he told me when I went and moved away to graduate school in Missouri was to not stop serving in the house of God. I found a church that I loved and I started to serve. And I started to serve in the kids areas because that's where I was drawn to all my years of serving at Faith Christian Center growing up. And I was amazed at the people I met and the friendships I formed, but also I know that as I was serving, God saw all that I did. He saw the joy in my heart, my gladness to be there, and that I was serving the young children and the pastors of that church by being in the young kids class. So young people, I would say that your first complaint may be, I don't, I don't have a boyfriend. You know, why is it taking so long for God to meet my needs? Are you serving? Are you following his word? Are you tithing? Are you learning the things that a young woman should know? Cooking, cleaning, budgeting, all the things that you'll take with you into your future. And sometimes we think, oh, I have years to learn that. Life starts moving very quickly and you want to have the basics down to be that Proverbs 31 woman, the woman that is ready for her future mate, the woman that is ready for those future children, the woman of God who is strong on the inside so she can be strong on the outside for her husband and her children and for those around her. There are people around that are either uplifters or drainers. They seem to uplift you. You spend five minutes in their presence and they're thanking God and praising Him for all the wonderful things that are happening in their life, in your life. But then there are sometimes drainers where you spend five minutes around them and they just tell you every problem that they're having. Or they may try to tell you what your problems are or to bring you down. And those are the people we have to limit. Know your value, know who you are in Christ. Sometimes we have to change the people we spend our time with. We spend our time in God's word. We spend our time lifting ourselves up in his word, reading Proverbs, reading scriptures, doing daily devotionals, not just waiting for church on Sundays for a pastor to lift us up, but every day renewing our minds to His Word. We spend time loving our husbands and doing things for our husbands out of love. It's not just a chore. It's something that we can change into being joyful about. Um, with our kids, we raise them, we train them, we monitor them, we put time into what they're watching or who their friends are, what they're listening to, to make sure that we are raising them to be God's children and not the world's children. And to wrap it all up, I would say, remember your value, young women. If you're newly married, you've been married a long time, or you are not married yet, know your value, serve in the house of God, get to know the basics, finish your education, Run towards God. Don't just pick up the next man that's breathing, but wait for God to bring the right man to you. The man that I dated before I met Derek, um, he, we dated for a couple months, and I brought him to Faith Christian Center to meet my family, listen to the word, and I always tell young girls this that are dating and married age, that my biggest regret is I didn't do that sooner because he really had a problem with the word and the faith message, you know, faith, to have faith and to believe God for what you want based on his word. If you find it in scripture, is it, how could it be wrong? But that was his hang up. So we uh, dissolved our dating relationship in the airport that night. And thankfully it was months later that I met Derek while serving in the church. Um, the volunteer coordinator for the kids areas knew him, knew me, and said, hey, you should meet this girl that goes to Evangel. She's a graduate student. Are you seeing anyone? And Dara thought, I don't want to be set up. That's weird. Well, she just pointed me out to him. Time goes by, and he just notices me up there volunteering in the kids areas. And he was directing traffic up there, so he was there a lot for 
Sunday church and special events and eventually walks up to me and says, hi, I'm Derek. <laughs> and from there, the rest um, is history. So you can really throw yourself off track, young women of God, by not believing that you deserve more, that you deserve better than Mr. Right now. Don't marry him. <laughs> Don't date him. <laughs> Don't give him any more time. Trust in the Lord that he will give you the desires of your heart. And your value, your worth is much more, much more than just a short-term relationship or to spend your life wondering if there was more that God had for you, because there is. God wants you to be blessed. He wants you to be healthy. He wants all of us to be wise. And he wants all of us to have a blessed life. And we do that by following the basics. Let's get back into the basics and learn from Jessica and Pastor Sue tonight about what we can do in our lives. Things that smart women do. Thank you so much. And I miss you all. And I plan to be there next time with baby Riley and our little girl, Emma. So you all have a really fun night. Thank you. That was great. Christina has that pregnancy glow, which can be hard that last month <laughs> when you're like, okay, I'm done being pregnant. But that was so great. And I'm, you know, she, you can just tell how happy she is. So I'm just so happy for her. Um, I really liked what Christina said about dating and how she brought the guys to church to see if they'd make the cut. Um, that's what it is. <laughs> can you cut it with Dr. Jean? No? Okay, move on. Um, well, so it made me think about, you know, we tell young girls to have a list of attributes that you want in your husband and not to settle. You know, when you have it written down, it's easier to say, yes, he made criteria one. No, he didn't make criteria two. So my first three were, one, he loves God and is a true Christian, which you have to kind of, you know, we're supposed to look at people's fruit. So you have to analyze his fruit to see if he's a true Christian. Number two, that he tithes, which means he has a job. And then number three, will he attend FCC? So Austin had that one easy. <laughs> Dr. Jean approved of him, so <laughs> that one was easy. But, but that was on my list before, um, before dating Austin. That was always on my list. I grew up in the church, and I knew I wasn't going to leave the church. So if someone wanted to take me away from it, well, then no. So I wasn't going to leave it. I saw the results my parents had from raising me and my brother here in the church and their marriage success out of coming from their backgrounds, and I didn't want to leave it. So that was why that was on my list. So just don't settle, and that's what I'll cover on dating. But we can move on to the real message tonight, which is things smart women do. In our verse, Proverbs 14, 1, the wise woman builds her house, but with her own hands, the foolish one tears hers down. So number one, it's smart to be grateful. Wise women have an attitude of gratitude. So number one, it's smart to be grateful. Uh, 1 Thessalonians 5, 18, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. And then 1 Chronicles 16, 34, give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His love endures forever. And Psalm 100, verse 4, enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. So those are only three verses that cover, cover gratefulness and thankfulness, but it is all throughout the Bible. So just be happy today where you are. I think, um, you know, we, we emphasize having goals and that's great. But you also need to be grateful where you're at instead of this, like, if I just get to this next level, if I just get to this next level, then I'll be happy. But it really doesn't work like that for some people. They get to the next level, and then there's not really the fulfillment they were looking for. And then they get to the next one. And so we just need to find that fulfillment in God, the level that we're at, and be happy where we are. And then, you know, as we reach our goals, we'll, you know, we just keep having cont being content, being grateful, but just always being grateful where we're at whether it's in the sleepless stages of 
early motherhood or if it's trying to date or, you know, whatever it is, or, you know, your first few years at a job where you're trying to prove yourself, whatever it is, you know, just be grateful where you're at. And exchange a, crit a spirit of criticism and downcast face for an attitude of encouragement and a smile. Man, you smile at people sometimes today and they act like, what did I do? You know, it's like, you know, and even in Texas, you know, when you go outside of Texas, you're like, y'all need to smile. I don't know where you're from, but y'all need to smile. But to do that, spend more time in the word and less on social media. Now everyone's gonna be like, oh, Jessica in her anti-social media. I am not anti-social media. It can have a positive purpose, but we need to limit it. The latest software for the iPhones tracks your iPhone usage with each app, and it is shocking. I was shocked and embarrassed, and I try to limit my time. So if you complain about not having enough free time, maybe look at your iPhone, and it will tell you how much time you spend on it, and within each app. So Facebook, Instagram, it categorizes it for you, and it's a little scary. So, <laughs> um, but you know, when I say less time on social media, it's because I like to be efficient. I don't like to waste time. Um, but that doesn't mean I don't rest. Rest is productive. You know, as moms, we need to realize that rest is productive, it is good for you. You function better when you have rest, you're nicer to everyone when you have rest. And all the husbands would say amen for being nicer. But, when I want to address one way that I'm grateful in life that um, the world kind of looks weird at is being married for a long time. Austin and I will be married for 13 years this summer, which seems, I mean, it's, I mean I'm so excited this 13 years, but it's almost like, wow, are we old enough to be married 13 years? I'm still in my 20s. <laughs> Not really, but <laughs> it feels like it. But marriage, I don't know why the world has such a negative view on long marriages, they're always like, oh, how boring. But it's not, it's, um, so I saw on Facebook, see, I'm not anti-Facebook, I saw a Charles Spurgeon quote that I liked. He said, when husbands and wives are well yoked together, how light their load becomes. And that's what it's supposed to be. My life is easier with my husband. I mean, there's times, you know, we're two humans living together, sharing a bed together, sharing a bathroom together, you know, or it's not gonna be perfect harmony all the time. But, um, you know, being married this long, it's, it's great to know each other's strengths and weaknesses when you work as a team. I'm not trying to exploit his weaknesses. I'm trying to help him with his and he's trying to help me with mine. And his strengths will help my weaknesses and my strengths will help his weaknesses. So as a team, we get stronger and stronger every year. So that's why I think the world has it so backwards. The more years we're married, the better a team we are, the better in sync we can work together. And I don't complain about my husband. I think women like to get sympathy. They like to tell other women their problems. And, but why don't you just flip it around? Would you like your husband complaining to his friends about you? And the answer is no, <laughs> you would not. So I brought another VeggieTales book. I know y'all are like, is she endorsing VeggieTales? No, I am not. But I want to again emphasize how important it is what we're reading to our children. Because this one again, the singing does not work because it has been pressed too many times and I am not replacing the batteries again. <laughs> this one though is cute, it's called I Thank God for This Day. And I'll read just a few pages because it's just so cute. I thank God for this day, for the sun and the sky, for my mom and my dad, for my piece of apple pie. Amen. No, <laughs> I added the amen. <laughs> for our home on the ground, for his love that's all around, that's why I say thanks every day. Because a thankful heart is a happy heart. I'm glad for what I have. That's an easy way to start. For, he loves, for the love that he shares because he listens to my prayers, that's why I say thanks every day. So how sweet is that to emphasize to your children every day? We say thanks every day, and why we say thanks every day? Because everything around us, everything that's been given to us is from God. Everything good is from God. And they need to learn that from an early age because there's Christianity out there that teaches the opposite of that. And I don't understand it. And why would people want to hear about a God that would cause harm on them? And so this is good from an early age, that God is a good God, and he loves us, and we need to be 
thankful for that and be grateful to him. So, so just so cute. You know, the last part of the song is that's why I say thanks every day. And I'm trying not to sing it because I don't want to sing, but it's just, you know, it's cute. So point number two tonight, it's smart to be discreet. Keep private things private. Not on social media yet. <laughs> so Proverbs 2.11, discretion will protect you and understanding will guard you. And Proverbs 11.22, like a gold ring in a pig's snout is a beautiful woman who shows no discretion. Well, that puts it pretty bluntly, I think. <laughs> I don't know what else to say on that one, no. <laughs> but especially with social media, the God who sees in secret will reward you openly. That's Matthew 6, 4. And so if you're ever considering going on social media, complaining about your job, your husband, your children, and then worse, God, Please don't do it. You will not get good results from that. Nothing good will come from you complaining ever, but especially putting it out there on the internet for other people to read and then to bring it up to you again. Other people seem to not forget your problems that quickly. They'll bring it up again and again and again. And you're like, yeah, I'm past it, okay? You know, so, so don't put it out there. And, um, but like, what do you really want when you're posting something like that? Do you just want the sympathy or do you really want your issues resolved? Because if you want them resolved, don't post them online. And then let's flip the scenario. Let's say a man did this. Can you imagine the hate he would get on social media if he put a Facebook post out there, my wife, and complained? But yet women do this all the time and other women just support, support each other in their complaining. It's not, it's not good for your marriage, so don't do it. And it's not good, even if you're not married, to complain about God or whatever it is, just get complaint out of your mouth. And then number three, it's smart to forgive and move forward. Live today and don't dwell on the past. Since faith is now, it's wise to stop thinking about the past and live today while looking ahead with a positive attitude of expectation. Like the pastor in Austin have been teaching on Sunday, that attitude of expectation will keep you from looking back. It'll keep you looking forward. What, is, what good is going to happen today? What miracle is going to happen today? And so let's read 1 Peter 3. I'm going to read verses 8 through 22, which I know some people will be like, that is more Bible than I've heard in a year. But great. <laughs> more Bible, the better. Finally, all of you be like-minded, be sympathetic, love one another, be compassionate and humble. Do not repay evil with evil or insult with insult. Only the contrary, repay, repay evil with blessing. Because to, to this you were called so that you may inherit a blessing. For whoever would love life and see good days must keep their tongue from evil and their lips from deceitful speech. They must turn from evil and do good. They must seek peace and pursue it. For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are attentive to their prayer. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. Who is going to harm you if you are eager to do good? But even if you should suffer for what is right, you are blessed. Do not fear their threats. Do not be frightened. But in your hearts, revere Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. But do this with gentleness and respect, keep, keeping a clear conscience so that those who speak maliciously against you, your good behavior in Christ, may be ashamed of their slander. For it is better if it's God's will to suffer for doing good than for doing evil. For Christ also suffered once for sins, the righteousness for the unrighteous, or the righteous for the unrighteous, to bring you to God. He was put to death in the body, but made alive in the spirit. After being made alive, he went and made proclamation to the to the imprisoned spirits, to those who were disobedient long ago when God waited patiently in the days of Noah while the ark was being built. In it, only a few people, eight in all, were saved through the water, through water, and this water symbolizes baptism that now saves you also. Not the removal of dirt from the body, but the pledge of a clear conscience towards God. It saves you by the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at God's right hand with angels, authorities, and powers in submission to him. So verse 9 says, we are to repay evil with blessing. And I have learned it is, you're never going to go wrong being generous because God's our source. 
And if you have that mentality, that understanding that even if you bless someone and they turn around and they do something bad back to you, you just say, Lord, I did it for you. And then he, he blesses you no matter how the other person acts. Colossians 3.13, bear with each other and forgive one another if any of you has a grievance against someone. Forgive, forgive as the Lord forgave you. And my mom has always kind of teased me positively, but about kind of being a duck and just letting, you know, it roll off my back when people say things. And I just come to the point where I'm like, well, hey, that's got nothing to do with me. That's always just kind of been my personality. I don't know, you know, it's just like, well, okay. <laughs> you know, I'm just going to let it fall off. And, um, but realize if someone does do something to you, sometimes it's not about you. You know, it's not always about you. It's a, they could be going through something. But I think when you realize it's not all about you, um, it saves you a lot of hurt. And I mean, it's easy for me to say that I've realized that. I have four children, so I know it is not all about me. It is usually all about them during the day, which is great. I mean, that's, that's the role I'm in right now, and I'm enjoying it. But if you have this attitude that everything is about you, you will take everything personally. And, and that's, not, that's not what you're supposed to do. You know, we're supposed to be Christ-like and not, like, bear it all. You know, we just kind of are supposed to shine for Jesus. So pastor said this past Sunday at 9 a.m., uh, it doesn't matter what they do, it just matters what you do. Let it go. I was like, hey, he did number point three for me. Thanks. <laughs> no. But, you know, it's just, it's not productive to try to figure out what other people are doing and why they're doing it. Who knows? Only God. And there's no point in us trying to sit there and try to figure out someone's next move or why did they hurt me or, I don't know, forgive them and just move on and love them and pray for them. You know, when you hear something about someone that you don't understand or you just can't figure out what's going on, just pray for them. You don't have to, you know, say something to them unless the Holy Spirit tells you, but just pray for them and be mindful of them. Um... So just do what you're supposed to do, and God will bless the work of your hands according to Deuteronomy 28.12. And with that, Pastor Sue is going to finish the second half of our message. Thank you, Jessica. So we are talking about things smart women do. How many of you know that you are a smart woman? All right, and you know, we're to become wiser as we grow and live this life for Christ. We're to be in the Word, that's where Christina started out, and then Jessica's giving us these great examples of things smart women do. As that wise woman, she builds her house. She's not like the foolish woman. She doesn't tear it down. So this one is a little different. You know, we've kind of been dealing with uh, some of the attitudes of the heart and behavior. Point number four, it's smart to put your, the smart woman puts her best foot forward every day, an attitude and an appearance. Say, whoa. <laughs> I, I made a hospital visit yesterday afternoon with uh, my son Austin, uh, a dear lady of our, uh, in the church. She's been in the church, gosh, since the beginning. In fact, she was uh, working in the nursery of the church. We attended when our son Austin was born, what was that, 36, 37 years ago, somewhere in there, yeah. And um, I walked, we walked into the hospital room. And she's not laying in the bed. Uh, she, she'd been taken to the emergency room a couple days previous. Uh, they thought she'd been bleeding internally. She just had collapsed, you know. And so they got her into the hospital, and they had to give her blood. And, uh, you know, her daughter told me that she had actually gone gray. And... Um, they were very concerned, and so you know how it is. It takes time in a hospital. They don't do it, things quickly, so she'd already been there like a day and a half or so. And, but she was not laying in the bed. She was sitting up in the chair. Her hair was all fixed. We walk in. I mean, literally, she looked like she'd been sitting here on Sunday morning. Like she was, you know, hi, Pastor Sue. I didn't know you were going to come. Pastor Austin. 
And, you know, she was just as happy as happy could be. And I told her, I said, you look better than everybody we passed coming into this place. And they're not even patients. They're, like, here to visit people. And I said, you look great. And then she began to tell us instantly the few scriptures she was standing on. So we just agreed with her. And we got the good word today that they took her in for the scan and everything. Couldn't find a thing wrong with her. So God's the healer. He's the blesser. But I'm saying all that to say this. A smart woman puts her best foot forward. You might be in the hospital. She was in the hospital. Uh, or you might be, you know, having a hard day at work or a hard day at home juggling everything that you juggle or a hard day at school or somebody giving you the razzmatazz uh, or, you know, some guy you thought was going to ask you out on a date and instead he walked over to the girl sitting at the de desk next to you and uh, asked her out instead. Whatever it is. Whatever it is. So it's smart. Say, I'm a smart woman. So I'm going to put my best foot forward every day in attitude and in appearance. So something pastor likes to say, HMC, hair, makeup, clothes. HMC is important, but even more important, it's all about the heart. It's all about the heart. And our dear lady, Miss um, Mosley was sitting in that chair, you know, she's, I don't know how old she is, but I told her she looks half her age, because she really does, but it's her countenance. It's the joy of the Lord. I mean, it is the joy of the Lord in her. And so countenance matters, and the attitude of the heart matters. First Peter chapter 3, verses 1 through 6 says, Wives, in the same way, submit yourselves to your own husbands, so that if any of them do not believe the word, they may be won over without words. So not much nagging. No, that's not what it says. They may be won over without words by the behavior. Say, it's my behavior, it's my behavior. that will speak. Louder than, my words. Louder than my words. They will be won over by the behavior of their wives when they see the purity and reverence of your lives. Your beauty should not come from outward adornment such as elaborate hairstyles and the wearing of gold jewelry or fine clothes. Rather, it should be that of your inner self, the unfading beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit which is of great worth in God's sight. For this is the way the holy women of the past who put their hope in God used to adorn themselves. They submitted themselves to their own husbands like Sarah who obeyed Abraham and called him her Lord. You are her daughters if you do what is right and do not give way to fear. So yeah, so it's not saying, you know, don't, don't, um, you know, don't wear nice clothing or don't wear jewelry. What, it's, what he's saying here is it's important your true beauty is going to radiate from your, your inner self. That inner beauty that comes from that inner self, the unfading beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit. And so, you know, because clothes, you know, are one thing, and makeup's another, and hair's another, and you can look well put together, but I'm sure all of us at one point or another have seen or known a woman that was always or looked well put together and was, you know, very dressed and very chic and very elegant on the outside, but maybe she had, you know, just, just, she just looked mean. She just looked unhappy. She just looked like, you know, this is not a person I want to have to talk to or deal with. And, you know, the kind, you know, you hope uh, I'm going to go to the lady at the other counter. I'm not going to talk to you. So we put our best foot forward because you're a smart woman. Uh, Pastor likes to say, and this was not popular, so please be sure and come Sunday morning. It is Mother's Day. If he says it, start clapping really loud because he's going he's gonna to automatically think, man, they are gonna, they're not going to receive this well. You know, I try and help these women, but they don't, they don't respond. So let's just really, let's get, let's see, maybe if you want to jump up, I'll jump up with you. Ju we'll jump up and give him a standing ovation. Okay, if he says, what's he going to say? Women, men, your husbands need something good to look at. Now, I don't know what's happening out there, but just because they sell athletic wear everywhere, I mean, 
I, I go to visit somebody in the hospital. People are wearing athletic wear, and it is obvious that they have never exercised one <laughs> moment in their whole life. And what is this thing, at least if you're gonna wear it, the spandex and all that, and how you got, they get squeezed into all that, I don't know. But then they don't even wear like nice athletic shoes, they wear flip flops. I mean, please. And then, that's obvious, no pedicure for ages and moons. So, so let's, let's think about appearance here, okay? So um, your husbands need something good to look at, and you young girls, why doesn't anyone ask me out? Why doesn't anyone ask me out? Well, you can't wait until date night when you've already been asked out to like actually put on something besides your, your, your sloppiest, most comfortable jeans and you know, the shirt that, you know, is, I know it's your favorite thing because it's so comfy, but it is not attractive. It is not a pretty look. So, and I don't know why your mother does not want to tell you, but. <laughs> I, I, will, I will say, you know, look in the mirror. Is that, you know, how Prince Charming is going to, you know, is that the, the gal? I mean, think about Cinderella. All right, for just a moment, think about Cinderella. There she was, scrub and mop and cook and cleaning for the wicked stepmother and the stepsisters and that, but when it came time to meet the prince and go to the ball, bippity boppity boop. <laughs> She needed the fairy godmother. I mean, she made her own dress with the help of the mice and the birds, I got it. But then the, the wicked stepsisters tore it all apart. Well, she didn't, she didn't say, well, I'll go anyway, because he'll see that, you know, I'm, I am the princess, I am the one. No, no, she had to be dressed. HMC, so. All right, you got it, HMC. Number five, a smart woman knows how to treat her spouse like she wants to be treated. A smart woman will treat her spouse like she wants to be treated. You know, we have to understand wives, of, you know, we're married, we have husbands that they're our teammate. We're working together toward the same goals. And so we have to be that wise woman and build our house and understand uh, we need to honor our husbands. We need to value them, we need to show respect to them, we need to honor them. We, not, we need to not you know, have that attitude, doesn't matter what all we've had to deal with in our work or with the family or in, our, in, the, in the course of a day, but you know, they shouldn't come home or we shouldn't see each other after a long day and, and us look at them like, oh, it's you. Ugh. No, we need to show honor, we need to express appreciation, we need to compliment and complete our spouses, not criticize. Be an encourager, be an encourager, because what do I want? I want to be encouraged. I don't want my husband to criticize. I don't want him to, you know, uh, you know find complaints. I want him to, to appreciate, to compliment, to, to encourage me. And if I need a little help, you know, to be my helper. Well, we're supposed to be that for our spouses, to be that encourager, to be that completer, to be that complimenter, and to show some help there. So we want to treat our spouses like we want to be treated. And if you're not married, that goes a long way with other people. Treat pe other people like you want to be treated. You know, whether you're uh, waiting in line somewhere and you finally get to the cashier and, and they're a little snarly because the person ahead of you just kind of treated them badly. I had that experience this morning too at Tom, Tom Thumb. That was interesting. A little oriental lady. I don't know what she was complaining about. And the, and the nice gal, the cashier, she rang everything up, but the, the lady, the little oriental gal would not let her bag her groceries. She said, no, 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 I count items. I count items, I count eight. You charge 11. It's no, 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 no. Too many items, too many items. And the lady's like looking at me like, I don't know what's going on here. But you know, finally, I think she just credited something, put them all in the bag and she left happy. I mean, you know, it was one of those moments. So, um, but how do we want to be treated? How do we treat other people? Uh, and the smile, I love the, you know, to smile at people. And sometimes it's a little scary because they look at you like, you must be insane, you're smiling at me. <laughs> 
but you know, walk around with a smile because a smile takes 10 years off your appearance. It really does. And if you're young, don't worry. You won't look like an infant. It just makes you beautiful. <laughs> so we want to treat people like we want to be treated. And that, you know, it, it is about sowing and reaping. With words, with deeds, with actions, it is about sowing and reaping. And then number six, a smart woman is crazy in faith and in the love of God. That wise woman, she builds her house by faith. And she builds her house by loving God and loving his word. And loving God means loving his word. And loving his word and loving uh, God means being loving, coming into the house of God to worship him, to hear his word, to fellowship. As Christina was sharing in the intro, it means helping, being a blessing. Uh, it means, you know, participating. And one of the big ways we can participate is something that Pastor and uh, Pastor Austin have been saying all year long, something that Tiff Shuttlesworth said, the evangelist, when he came uh, early in the year, is just uh, don't miss a service. Give God this year and see what God will do in your life. And, you know, we have had more testimonies and more miracles since January of this year. I mean, it's astounding. I mean, it's amazing. And, you know, just yesterday, going into that hospital room, she'd obviously been bleeding in internally for some time. They had to give her quite a bit of blood. But then she goes in for the scans. There's nothing wrong. They can't find anything wrong. It's a miracle. It's an answer to prayer. It's exactly what she believed that there wouldn't be any issues and she can go home. And so God's good. It's smart. That smart woman, that wise woman, she builds her house by faith and in the love of God. So we decide, ladies, to be faith-filled and respond to every situation with faith. And faith works by love. Faith works by love. You know, we'll, if, we, if we will determine every day that we're going to walk in the love of God no matter what. No matter what, no matter who, no matter when, no matter why. In other words, we're going to walk in the love of God because greater is he who is in me than he who is in the world. Then we just rise above. We rise above situations, circumstances, slights, insults, um, whatever, whatever's going on in any given day. Faith works by love, and it's so important for your marriage if you're married, and critically important for your children if you're a parent, to encourage them and to be positive every day, and, and walk in the love of God. That doesn't mean you don't discipline or correct. Discipline and correction is a part of the Word of God. That's why I encourage you to read Proverbs, read a proverb every day, and know what the Word of God says about correction and disciplining children, but it's got to be in love, and it's got to be in the love of God. And the wise woman, this wise woman, she stays filled with the Word of God, and she keeps her mind on the promises of God. And so all of us face, you know, times of tiredness or discouragement or a challenge, or we're faced with a situation that seems overwhelming, or, you know, what, what do I do with this, or how, how can God, you know, come through for me in this situation, or my family member, or my friend, but then, you know what, he does, because the Word of God is powerful. The Word of God is powerful, and He hears us when we pray. God hears us when we pray. Can you say amen? Amen. amen. So it's smart. It's smart to do what the wise woman and the smart woman does. And the wise woman is the one whose house stands. She builds her house, and it stands. She enjoys it. Her life, her home, her family, it stands. But that foolish woman, she's making the wrong decisions, the wrong choices. She's got the wrong behavior going, the wrong attitude, the wrong actions. And she just tears it, tears it down, tears it down. And I've got one more word to say, and it's not in my notes, but um, that's why it's important. You're smart women. You do what smart women do your wise women, but don't, don't let foolish woman tear down your life. Don't let them get in there and mess with your home or your family or your kids. You know, some people are just a mess, and, and their life's a mess, and they're going to get in there and try and bring their mess into your, into your life and make your life a mess like theirs. So you, you, you got to be smart. 
You know, we minister to people, but we don't take them home with us. And, um, you know, you, you got to be smart. You got to, you know, your home is your home. And your life is your life. And you've got to protect it. And God wants you to. He wants you to. And he wants you to protect your marriage. He wants you to protect your children. And you're supposed to do that. And so you do it and you don't ever apologize to anybody about it. And you don't feel bad about it either. Because you know what? Everybody's living their life. Everybody's doing what they want to be doing. They don't ask your permission. They don't ask, they don't ask your opinion. I know, because they don't ask mine. So, you know, you just let everybody, they're going to do what they're going to do. But you, you guard the sanctity of your home and your family and your marriage and your children. And, and you be that wise woman and you build your house. Amen?